Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Cumulative trading volume for the US spot Bitcoin ETF broke past the $500 billion mark on Wednesday. So guys, this just happened yesterday, and it's only been 10 months since its launch. So guys, Bitcoin spot traded ETFs gaining a lot of popularity, uh, you know, probably because we're seeing the price of Bitcoin going sky high. US spot Bitcoin ETFs top half a trillion dollars in cumulative trading volume less than a year after their launch. The ETF trading volume grew swiftly since launching in January, reaching the $100 billion mark by March and $200 billion by April as Bitcoin rose to new all-time highs uh, of nearly $74,000 at that time for the first time earlier this year. And I'm sure you guys remember when Bitcoin did finally break its all-time high back in March. However, the trading volume trajectory then slowed slightly amid a cooling off phase for the crypto market that saw Bitcoin consolidate in a range between $50,000 to $70,000 for the next seven months. But then the unthinkable happened. These numbers reached new all-time highs again following pro-crypto Donald Trump's U.S. presidential victory on November the 6th. By the close of trading yesterday, though, guys, U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs had reached a cumulative volume of 5584 billion dollars so breaking that 500 billion dollar mark half a trillion if you want to think of it that way according to the blocks data dashboard well the metric is up only in nature it still represents a significant milestone for the new bitcoin funds competing against some of the largest and most established etf products in the world including the vanguard s p 500 etf voo and the invesco qqq trust nasdaq 100 index so guys we've made it to the big leagues cryptocurrency and bitcoin in particular is now butting heads and competing against some of these major products like the s p 500 the nasdaq and some of these uh, trusts formed by big institutional private equity funds so we've got bitcoin right now trading at ninety one thousand dollars per coin uh, we did see Bitcoin come up to 93,005. So we are, this is when you know we are experiencing euphoria when we keep seeing new all time highs being broken. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a time, I'm just going to let you guys know right now, there's going to be a time where this stops happening for a bit. And yes, the inexperienced traders will say, oh, what? Fine. Now we're in a bear market because it'll, it'll come up and then we'll start to see this for uh, a few weeks, uh, maybe even a month before Bitcoin reverses. And then breaks up into a new all-time high. And, you know, that 30 days or so, whatever that ends up being, that's what catches people off guard. That's what tricks people. And so, you know, timing this market, that is, uh, you know, I think one of the most important things we have to focus on this bull run. For more information on what I'm doing, again, you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. I do have a few new updates for my Patreon subscribers. I'm probably going to, um, I'm probably going to post one today, later this afternoon. Got some updates for you guys regarding uh, crypto exchanges, the $15,000 plus portfolio. Everything thing is looking very, very good. Uh, and I've got some new theories brewing about, uh, you know, where and when I think we're going to hit the top of this market. I mean, I'm still looking at many different factors here, but, uh, you know, if you want to pick my brain on that kind of thing, I do hold regular live Q and a sessions as well. You can find me at patreon.com slash working money channel. Guys, the whole point of this is to get on the same side of the trade. We want to be trading against the FOMO when that comes into the market and it is coming very, very soon. We're seeing, you know, a lot of indicators suggesting that that, uh, you know, it's it's all just kind of building. We're going to see this perfect storm coming very soon. So fear and greed still at 86. Check this out. Bitcoin dominance up above 60. We can see in the last 24 hours, volume has increased to about 14.4%. Uh, and now, guys, finally, it is uh, finally recorded here. Market cap is 3 trillion dollars so a lot of money flowing into crypto right now you can see bitcoin and uh, most of the altcoins are up in the green even meme coins like pepe are up 58.3 percent in the last 24 hours alone guys look at that in the last seven days pepe is up 103.6 percent um and you know we're going to see this kind of insanity for the next little while. And it's going to occur for, you know, different types of altcoins throughout this bullish season. XRP has been chugging away. I mean, it's been following, generally speaking, it's been following the Bitcoin trend, but, uh, and, and very volatile swings, I got to say, but XRP on the short term, this is the hourly chart. You guys can see it is also forming 
higher lows and higher highs right now as of the time of this recording. XRP is trading in and around 71.4. So getting up above 70, of course, uh, you know, there are some crucial uh, levels of resistance that we do have to break still. So we got up above 66 cents. That was a big one. Uh, and now this one, 74.5. We're kind of butting up against that one right now. As you guys can see here, that is when we saw that decline yesterday, uh, that red candlestick in the middle. But guys, we're showing bullish pressure moving to the upside once again. So positive moves for XRP. That's going to be another biggie waiting in anticipation for that. Crypto Insight UK here posting this. So he was noticing Bitcoin dominance. He says BTC.D has a decision to make. It's about to full send and suck in liquidity or pull back to at least the bottom of the range and allow altcoins to go a bit crazy. That's the thing, right? In the past, what used to happen with uh, Bitcoin dominance is we would generally see a lot of this uh, money go into Bitcoin first and then uh, eventually go into altcoins. Here, let me get rid of some of this because this was uh, I was talking about this before. 60% has been that key factor that we've been eyeing for quite some time now, anywhere between 60 and 67%. That's where we've seen a ranging area in the past, back from March of 2021. Uh, Bitcoin has, in recent times, gone up as high as 73% in terms of dominance before plummeting. So, um, you know, now the question is, I mean, we've been seeing a lot of dominance. This is the weekly chart, by the way. A lot of dominance for Bitcoin. It is continuing to climb. And, uh, you know, as we start seeing um, money coming out of Bitcoin and into altcoins, or rather, uh, historically, there's been a, an alternation of funds in past cycles. We've seen that. But more recently, what we've seen is money also flowing into Bitcoin, but just at a lower rate, but then kind of flooding into altcoins at a higher rate. So we could see one of these two things occur. Right now, though, all we're seeing is Bitcoin dominance just kind of rising. And, uh, you know, Crypto Insight UK wondering, are we going to see this number just continue to shoot up before we hit, like, I don't know, 73%, let's say, and then plummet. Of course, when it plummets, guys, this is when uh, we take profits in altcoins. At this point, that's when we take profits in Bitcoin. So uh, a couple of different strategies here that I'm uh, obviously going to be taking into consideration and uh, letting my Patreon subscribers know what I'm going to be doing. Nevertheless, another interesting metric that I thought I'd bring up, wanted to thank Crypto Insight UK for posting that. Mason here mentioning this, creator of Cardano ADA is now trying to team up with HBAR after talking to XRP. So Charles Hoskinson, as you guys uh, probably didn't know, he's going to be working with the Trump campaign in 2025. I recently did a video on that, which I will link here in the top right hand corner. Well, now Charles is reaching out to Lehman Baird of HBAR. He says, let's have a call sometimes. Uh, as you guys also probably know, HBAR uh, is also being considered for an ETF through um, one of those institutions. Uh, what is it? Canary Capital? I think it was Canary. So this is all shaping up very, very nicely for uh, you know some of the utility coins in the space. I also just wanted to bring up this public service announcement. Trader who lost $26 million <laughs> to a copy and paste error says it's been max pain. So guys, also, um, just be sure that you are double, triple, quadruple checking if you have to. Make sure you got all your ducks in a row before, uh, you know, sending any types of uh, large amounts of cryptocurrency anywhere. A trader who lost $26 million after accidentally copying and pasting the wrong transfer address is offering a $2.6 million reward to white hackers in the hopes of getting their money back. Synonymous crypto trader told Cointelegraph that they accidentally transferred uh, 7,912 uh, Renzo. Uh, restaked Ethereum. So that was worth about 26 mil. Unfortunately, they said they entered the incorrect address and sent funds to a safe module instead of his own safe, meaning that the tokens were locked and unable to be withdrawn. When asked about how the mistake was made, he offered a short response in one word, wrong copy. So um, guys, I always say, you know, keep your cryptocurrency safe on a cold wallet storage solution. I personally use a Ledger Nano. I do have an affiliate link in the description of the video. You can use it if you want. Uh, you don't have to use it, but uh, what I do suggest, find something that you guys uh, are comfortable with using. Make sure you do hold your own keys to your own cryptocurrency. In this case, this was um, just a cutting and pasting error, but you know, always keep, what, what I tend to do is I keep a list of all my, uh, all my addresses and I make sure that once I've sent, um, you know, crypto to an address, I, I highlight it green saying, okay, this, this address works. I know it's good. And, uh, I mean, that's just me personally, what I do. And I keep a list of all the exchanges I have, my cold wallet storage solutions. I've never had a problem with the Ledger Nano. So again, affiliate link in the description. If you guys want to use it, you can, if you want, you don't have to use it though. I'm not twisting your arm. Just play it safe guys, because you don't want this kind of thing to happen to you, you know, especially at the height of the market when everybody is getting excited. Anyway, got to keep moving along. Smoke here, posting this guys, institutions are expecting 
Gary Gensler to be fired by the end of 2024. This means that all of the crypto security cases he's pursuing will be aborted. Therefore, it's possible the SEC versus Ripple case could be thrown out if he's gone by this year. And guys, this was published in this document here. Check this out. We expect that Gary Gensler will be fired before the end of the year. In the legal cases, he has wasted tens of millions of dollars of taxpayer money pursuing, uh, in which the industry has spent more than f uh, $400 million defending, will be aborted. So uh, again, I, I wish Smoke would post uh, some of these references uh, with a link, a uh, hyperlink, so I could go to them. But you know, when I hear this kind of thing, it kind of, uh, well, it really does line up with the sentiment I feel like now in the crypto space, but also at the top level, how, uh, you know, politicians are uh, also... Um, you know, maybe taking a fresh look at cryptocurrencies. Along those same lines, another one from Smoke here, uh, and this one here, he uh, he posted at screen grab from NYDIG. Recent insight from the NYDIG suggests that changes in SEC leadership may bring greater regulatory clarity for digital assets. With clear established laws, institutional adoption and innovation in the crypto space are expected to grow. This leadership shift at the SEC could lead to the settlement or dismissal of high-profile crypto cases, including those revolving around Ripple, Coinbase, and Kraken. Once resolved, the these companies would be able to operate under clearer and more supportive regulatory guidelines, reducing the legal uncertainty that has weighed on the industry. This new direction will foster a more open environment for crypto innovation and growth, aligning the regulatory framework more closely with public interests. So the NYDIG stating this specifically, discussing uh, the high profile lawsuits, specifically the Ripple case, Coinbase, Binance, Kraken and Cumberland. Uh, down here it says a post-election leadership change may usher in more accommodating regulatory philosophy. This could lead to the SEC seeking settlements with these companies, allowing them to operate within a clarified regulatory framework, or in some cases dropping certain lawsuits entirely. So, uh, you know, more evidence to suggest there could be, uh, you know, a, a, an instance, a, a situation, a possibility. There could be a possibility where the Ripple lawsuit is in fact thrown out. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, I happen to see this two guys from Eisenreich. VeChain adoption is accelerating as well. So VeChain, one of those cryptocurrencies, part of my $15,000 plus portfolio that I have over there at patreon.com slash working money channel, but also part of my legacy portfolio. I really like this coin for many different reasons. VeChain recently revived from a boring stagnation to an impressive daily high of 0.02 after Bitcoin's euphoria tickled down on the broad market. According to our market data, the asset has printed a 16% gain on its weekly price chart and a 10% surge on its 30-day chart. But guys, this is just the beginning. Again, this is one of the altcoins that is uh, you know, likely just waiting for that pent-up demand to uh, be unleashed. And then uh, once we do hit maximum dominance for Bitcoin, boom, that dominance is going to cascade down and the altcoins are going to see the bulk of their gains. Here it says uh, VeChain's on-chain activities have been impressed as unique addresses on the network have reached an excess of 4.3 million, according to market analyst Crypto Busy. These numbers underscore the growing adoption of VeChain. So uh, on-chain dynamics too are, uh, are just demonstrating how much more uh, these utility coins are being used uh, in a real world setting. But ultimately, I mean, people are looking at these coins uh, in terms of price and where these prices are going to go in the near future. So guys, it's getting really exciting. You know, I really love hearing these types of updates as well coming from Rob Art. Exit liquidity is coming. And you know what that means? And you know what that's code for? Well, guys, Robinhood just listed Pepe, Solana, Cardano, and XRP. Remember, it's the exit liquidity that we need as traders who bought cryptocurrencies in the uh, in the early days over the last two years, let's call it. We bought our big positions down and around here near the bottom. Well, what we need is that exit liquidity. We need people trading. We need the exchanges to have lots of volume flowing through them so that we, us traders who bought low and are not going to be buying up here so that we can trade for maximum profit. And, uh, you know, Rob Art's got the right idea here. Crypto friendly Donald Trump's win in the U.S. presidential election race will likely result in a change in leadership at the SEC. So the article starts off with, uh, well, with that comment. Uh, however, guys, it was announced that the crypto trading platform Robinhood has added sizably to the numbers of cryptocurrencies available for trade for U.S. customers specifically just one week after the elections appeared uh, to usher in a far friendlier regulatory environment for the industry. With the introduction of Solana, Pepe, Cardano, and XRP, Robinhood will now offer trading in 19 cryptocurrencies for its American clientele. The company said in a blog post on Wednesday, Coinbase, which already offered all of uh, Robinhood's additions, joined Robinhood in adding Pepe to their platform 
All of the named cryptos moved modestly higher alongside the announcement, as did Bitcoin, which printed a new record high above $91,000. Uh, so here's a quote, guys. We've consistently heard from our customers that they want access to more digital assets, and we're excited to continue expanding our crypto offering. This coming from the vice president and general manager of Robinhood Crypto. The news comes as President-elect Donald Trump, who is set to take office in January, is expected to push very little against crypto-related innovation. Among his pre-election promises uh, was the firing of crypto gadfly U.S. Security and Exchange Commission SEC Chair Gary Gensler. So boom goes the dynamite, guys. Solana. So you got to think of some of these cryptocurrencies. Let's look at the list really carefully here. Solana, Pepe, ADA, and XRP. Uh, and let's not forget, when we go up right to the top of the list here, Solana's in number four, uh, XRP's in number seven, Cardano's in number nine, and Pepe, number 15, a meme coin that is experiencing a surge in volume. So essentially, these moves are designed to get the FOMO retail in. And as FOMO retail comes in, guys, we're going to cash out at high prices. Again, for more information on what I'm doing this bull run, you can find me at patreon.com slash working money channel. I am only charging $5 a month for one tier. There's only one tier. That price is going to go up eventually. Uh, but if you get in now, you will be grandfathered in at the $5 price point. But again, just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.